Open our hearts that we may follow your truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please sit. A very good morning and blessed new year to all of you. It is first Sunday of the year 2024. May God continue to bless you and you will have a blessed and prosperous year. Yeah. This morning, uh, according to the church calendar, uh, we, will, we choose to observe the Epiphany Sunday uh, this morning. Epiphany has long been part of the church worship in early church and it was observed perhaps even more than Christmas. Uh, I think I have found points like that. Huh? Yeah. This was because while at Christmas, Christ was revealed to the Jews, but at Epiphany, Christ was revealed to the Gentiles, and the church rapidly included more Gentiles than Jews. And at Christmas, remember, the angel said to the shepherds who were Jews, saying, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people, meaning the Jewish people. But at Epiphany, that good news of great joy was extended to the Gentiles, to non-Jews, in this case, the wise men, the, ma the Magi. And so Epiphany is often re referred to as Gentile Christmas. Uh, when Christ was first made known to the nations outside of Israel. So the Gospel of Christ turns Gentiles into worshippers of true God. What is true worshipper? What is Christian worship? This may be a good topic for us to ponder in this beginning of the year. From the visit and worship of the wise men or the Magi to Jesus at Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 to 12, which is the Gospel reading this morning, we have three observations about the true meaning of worship. Number one, worship is a testimony to the true God. The Gospel of Christ turns Gentile into worshippers of true God. Likewise, the true worship will then make people known that our God, our God is true and a living God. Beginning from verse 1, Matthew 2. Matthew wrote as it is, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. And Herod has also heard of Jesus, but was disturbed because Jesus may overshadow his glory. He was also searching for Jesus, but not to worship, but was trying to reject and get rid of him. That's why in verse 3, it, it goes as this. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. How do we know that the wise men or the magi who, come, who came to worship Jesus were Gentiles? There are several indications here. First, they are called wise men from the East. The East probably means Persia or Babylon, where royal courts included such educated men who studied the stars and signs and of other cultures and other fields of learning. For another thing, the Magi asked, where is he who has been born of the Jews? By asking the question in this way, they indicated that they themselves are not Jews. So how would these Gentiles have known about coming a coming king of the Jews, most likely from the Jews who have been 
scattered throughout the Middle East. For example, centuries earlier, Daniel had been taken into the captivity in Babylon and even served in the royal court there, working with the Babylonian wise men. So Daniel and other dispersed Jews who have told those Gentiles about the coming Messiah who will bring salvation to all nations. Then also, the manifestation of the Christ to, the, to Magi fits well with the prophecies of God's salvation coming to Gentiles. And we heard uh, in the Old Testament reading, but we, meet, we didn't read this morning, in Isaiah chapter 60, 1 to 3. The light that God the light that God gives to Israel who attract worshippers from other nations. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the people. But the Lord will arise upon you and His glory will be seen upon you. All nations shall come to your light. They shall bring gold, frankincense, and shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. Reading from Old Testament, to Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 uh, to 3. So what is worship? The meaning of Christian worship is to recognize and to give glory to God with sense of reverence and physical expression. Therefore, worship can be acts of singing, praying and listening in church. It also can be expressed in our daily words and deeds with sense of reverence in our home, our workplace, and our community. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, do you know you, your worship, your true worship to God is indeed a testimony that may attract worshippers from those who are non-believers? You may not actively serve as a preacher, lay reader, intercessor, or ministry leader in the church. But if you take Sunday worship and Christian responsibility seriously, such as be punctual to Sunday service, even with the change of service time to allow more worshippers in church on Sunday morning, give generously to the ministry of God, pay full attention in praising the Lord and in God's word, you are standing as a testimony to the true and living God. And people will be attracted to come and worship and serve with you. So do it seriously and properly to testify our God is the true and living God and He is worthy for us to give Him honor and glory. And what is Christian worship? My second observation for the text is worship is Christ-centered. In verse 9, after they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. In verse 10, when they saw the star, they were overjoyed, overcoming to the house. They saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. The second thing that Epiphany tells us about worship is that it is Christ-centered. The star that the Magi has seen went before them until it came to the grass over the place where the child was. Then they saw the child and they fell down and worshipped him. The star stopped where the Christ was and where Christ is, the worship happens. For us now, the church is the place where Christ is, where he has promised to be present and here in, this, in his church, Christ is present in the midst of his people in the word of sacraments and word. Our Lord Jesus Christ is present 
with us, for us, and for us, gifting us with its forgiveness, life, and salvation. But why do we, why do we come to church to worship? It is a sacramental gesture. Through the gesture, we are reminded that we come into the presence of Christ. Be awful and be serious and be ready to worship. That is why the Anglican Church worship life is tied to the life of Christ. Maybe we can just show the diagram, the Christian year. Yeah, the truck, as you can look, as you can see from the screen, the structure of the church year reflects these facts that it ties to the life of Christ. The year begins with Advent, a time of waiting in hope for the coming Messiah. And at Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Christ. And in the Epiphany season, Christ manifests His glory to us as today we follow the stars we follow the star to Bethlehem and the weeks to come we will follow our Lord from his baptism to his transfiguration. And during the Lent, we go with Jesus on his journey to Jerusalem. And during the Holy Week, Christ's Passion, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Christ's suffering and death for our forgiveness. Then Easter come, the restoration of our Lord which means life forever for the baptized. Forty days later, the ascension of our Lord to the right hand of God, where He now rules all things for the sake of His church. And then Pentecost, the ascended Lord pours out the Spirit to work during the time of the church. And finally, the church years ends as we look forward to Christ's return. So as you can see from here, the, 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 church, the Christian year, the church year has kept us close to our Lord, for our life is now hidden with Christ in God. Indeed, Christ is our life. Therefore, worship must be and delights to be Christ-centered. Like the wise man, we have come to worship Him, namely Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm not sure have you ever asked this question in your journey of faith. Why do you come to church? Why do we come to church? Why must we come to church every Sunday? I think I can give you 10 reasons uh, or you can search to the Google why you must come to church. But the, 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 the most essential why we come to church is because worship is Christ-centered and it cultivates Christ-centered believers. We come to church to listen to the Word of God for ourselves, not for other people, and to be comforted by the Spirit of God on our brokenness. We building up each other through discipleship and we will be more and more like Jesus. And then we will be sent out to the world to testify the true and living God and make disciples of all nations. So this is why we need to come to church, a Christ-centered worship place. And thirdly, why is Christian, what is Christian worship? Worship is sacrificial. Now the third thing Epiphany tells us about worship is that it is sacrificial. We express our joy by giving of ourselves. The wise men were exceedingly in great joy and gave gifts to Christ in worship. They opened their treasures. They offered him gifts, which, is, which was gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These were costly gifts, expensive gifts of the, of the time. Gifts appropriate for one who was the saviour, king, the prophet, and the priest. The Magi expressed their adoration, their worship, 
and their thankfulness and joy by giving sacrificially. And so do we. Our worship must be also sacrificial. We give of ourselves, our time, our talent, and our treasure in our total worship life as Christians. We should set aside time to come to church and gather for worship. We give of our talents, whether by singing in choir or just singing the hymn as part of the worshiping congregation, whether by serving as an usher or in the altar guard, whether by serving as a congregation, congregational officer or in your daily life in acts of love and service in your community. These are ways to use our talents in the worship of God. We give of our time. We give of our talents. We give of our treasures. Church is not a club for holy men. Church is a place where we are discipled and we are sent out to the world to tell the world, come and worship the true and living God. Our offerings are expression of our worship as such as the singing of hymns. That check or dollar or green gate bill that you put in the offering plate is a foldable expression of who you are. In, it represents the time and work that went into getting it and in your giving, you are supporting the ministry of the gospel in this place. So our worship is sacrificial. Uh, not that our sacrifice could merit or earn our acceptance before God. No, only Christ's sacrifice does that. Our love for God is a response to His love for us, for His free gift of salvation. Even so, God does graciously receive our worship as an acceptable sacrifice for Christ's sake. We come to worship Him sacrificially. Let me underscore that point about the only sacrifice that makes any of our worship possible. The only sacrifice that enables us to come before God is the sacrifice that Christ made for us on the cross. The one born king of the Jews, grew up to have the title king of the Jews, placed over him, finally on the cross of a shame. There, Christ Jesus, the holy innocent one, bore your sins and mine, so that we sinner, now forgiven, can come into God's presence without being struck down. Christ is the great high priest who offered the one all availing sacrifice for sin by his own most holy blood. Without Christ, there is no worship. Without Christ, without his death and restoration, we will still be in the dark, not knowing God. But the good news is Christ has done all this for us and made us righteous before God. And through him, our worship is therefore acceptable to God. And I would just want to put this question to us, both you and me. As Jesus has sacrificed his life for us, how much we have sacrificed to worship him? How many of us worship God every week and it costs us nothing? I think too many Christians attending church as they are coming to a social club do not want to sacrifice anything but only getting what they want. Tell the person next to you, Pastor is not talking about you. Eh? Like the religious leaders Jesus condemned, George Bana, a church growth expert, has found that the more money a person makes, the less likely he is to tithe. In fact, uh, in his report, George shows that the average Christian gives 
less than 1% of his income to any charity or church offering. And on, a, on a, another note, average 80% of Christians are church pew warmer and only 20% are serving in one way or another. And the church grow as has reminded us that any church, if they can push out that 20% of actively serving in the church to 30%, and we will experience the great revival. We will experience great revival if just 10% more people who are willing to come and give themselves sacrificially in serving, in giving. As the first Sunday of, uh, of the year, maybe I just want to remind you with the following slides of our Vision 2026 of St. George's Church. This year we have entered into a season of propagate, uh, propagation. Uh, we cite uh, Psalm 126 verse 5. Those who sow in tears shall reap with, joy, uh, with joyful shouting. So uh, this our vision uh, since 2021. To, we are to grow St. George's, a pro cathedral of St. George the Martyr into a mission-minded and social concerned church by obeying the great commandment of Jesus Christ. We have a vision that by 2026, the church will have 500 worshippers in our parish. Uh, we, will, we have uh, started or we created five congregations in our church, two English congregation, uh, one BN congregation, one Chinese congregation, and one Tamil congregation. And we plan to plant another church by 2026. So with that, hopefully, uh, in, different, in, in, the, in total, we will probably to reach or to hit 500 worshippers in our church. We are not looking at the figure, but we have something for us to work on. Uh, and we have to pray earnestly for the Lord uh, to give us the blessing. So in 2024, uh, we, have, uh, we have some uh, figures to, uh, to work on. We hope this church by end of uh, 20, by end of last year, our, uh, in 2021, sorry, 2022, the end of 22, our regular worship due to pandemic was only 120. But in 2023, after uh, the creation of uh, the additionally uh, two, three congregation, we managed to uh, 250 worshippers in the year 2023. So in this year, 2024, we hope all of us can work together to continue to grow the church, continue to bring people to worship the Lord. So we have, uh, we, we hope that in, in, by the end of 2024, all the congregation can work together uh, that in total, we will record a 350 worshiper in our parish, and uh, we have uh, we will focus on three, at least uh, four area. Number one is we will continue on church planting, which we will continue to develop uh, to grow the congregation that we have created, and uh, secondly, on church planting, we are looking at the mission partner. It's mission partnership in uh, Palemban and Lambon in Sumatra. And we will, uh, second area that we focus will be the leadership development. We have AIM, Anglican Institute of Ministry. We will have lay leader course to prepare uh, extra new lay leaders to be licensed by diocesan bishop so that uh, the congregation, uh, the different congregations have more, power, uh, more manpower to look after. And thirdly, we will continue uh, to raise uh, uh, full-time uh, theological students, uh, uh, especially for the BM congregation, 
and we want to raise up uh, LM deaconess or deacon in our church. And finally, in the social ministry, uh, mission and evangelism, we plan to run five Alpha courses with total participants of 100 and a welfare fund and community pantry to upgrade community utility in an Olasli village in Greek of Pengalangpulu and also a small plan to be presented to the new members or confirmation candidate to remind them of their steward on the so we have a lot of things to do come and worship the Lord sacrificially give your talent give your giving give your time to the Lord let us work together to continue to grow the church and for the extension of God's kingdom worship is sacrificial if you have not worshipped Jesus sacrificially Let's make a change this year. Sacrifice your talent, money, and time for Jesus. Pray about, pray about it this year as you begin the year. When you come back next year, uh, next week, I hope you will come to any pastor or leader or St. George's and tell us, I would like to serve this year in, in church in this way or in another way. It can be Sunday school, youth ministry or any other ministry in this church. In conclusion, today, the Epiphany has told us several things about worship. First, the Epiphany turns Gentile, no worshippers into worship. God shines His light on us. We are, to, we are no longer in the dark. Secondly, Epiphany worship is Christ-centered. Mark, marked by the presence of Christ and tied to the life of Christ, who is our life, who is our life. And thirdly, epiphany, worship, is sacrificial, the giving of ourselves. But our sacrificial worship is simply a response to the one real sacrifice that counts before God, and that is Christ Jesus, the Son of God, giving himself for us. This is the epiphany of our Lord. And it tells us so much. And so today, dear friends, that the wise man being led to Jesus, we too have come to worship him. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for sacrifice your only son, Jesus Christ on the cross for us. And as we come to this Epiphany Sunday, we are once reminded that we too, like the wise men, like the Magi, the Gentile, we want to come and worship you in truth and Holy and Spirit. May you continue to help and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>